Leo Terrell, attorney and Fox News con contributor. Leo, let's start there and really what Hunter Biden is facing. And it isn't about him. It really is about what leads to his father, then vice president. And some of the things that they're looking at, too, are current with the president being in office right now. Just what he knew, when he knew it, that sort of thing. Absolutely. And so the gun charge has nothing to do with Joe Biden. It's the tax charges. It's the possible conspiracy of sex trafficking, Harris. There's a variety of things that David Weiss basically cut out the gun charge. But the big issue is what connects Hunter Biden to Joe Biden. We're going to get those answers, not from David Weiss and the Department of Justice, but from the House Republicans with the Oversight Committee, Harris. And there's a lot to be told later. But this case is very narrowly tailored about the gun charges. All right. You mentioned sex trafficking. I, I, I want to get to this. You just touched on it. New Treasury documents are revealing that bank investigators at Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan Chase suspected Hunter Biden of being associated with a sex trafficking ring, which was based in Eastern Europe, and that he falsified checks to pay prostitutes. That's according to suspicious activity reports that Hunter Biden's accounts were being monitored as late as December of 2019. So remember, I said this isn't so far ago in the past. The feds actually raised the possibility of charging Hunter Biden for crimes related to sex trafficking, according to IRS whistleblower documents made public by the House Ways and Means Committee last week. A Justice Department tax division prosecutor outlined nine instances in which Hunter Biden appeared to be communicating with prostitutes and coordinating their travel across state lines, so on and so forth. Leo, why didn't they charge him? Harris, I want to be very clear to your Fox viewers. We're not going to get charges from this Department of Justice. You got, you got Merrick Garland going on a campaign, a PR campaign on 60 Minutes. The evidence is there. You just articulated probable cause. You just laid it out as an attorney for 30 years. There is overwhelming evidence to pursue this. You have the IRS agents who testify that Hunter Biden tried to use these sex charges and write them off as a tax write-off. There's evidence. But if you honestly wow. believe there's going to be a pursuit of these charges, it's not going to occur through the Department of Justice. Wow. And you talk about those two tiers of justice. What else are Americans supposed to see when they look at this? One for them and one for the extremely privileged and politically powerful. Uh, all right. It is day two of former President Trump's civil fraud case in New York. Attorney General Letitia James wants him on the hook for $250 million in fines. She also wants to ban him from doing business in the state. Yeah, they'd like to rip his name off of everything. And it's all up to that one judge, the former president, tearing into both of them ahead of today's proceedings. Judge Engoran has been given false and extremely misleading information. He's been given false information misleading information and corrupt information by a very corrupt and incompetent attorney general, Letitia James. This woman is grossly incompetent. So the former president's legal team are upset because they never even had an option for a jury. They say that, that there is a form that you fill out. Watch this. There is no option to check a box. They brought this under a consumer fraud statute. It has never been used in this way for a reason, because this judge who oversaw the special proceeding has have given them everything they wanted effectively for years, and they wanted to keep it in this division as opposed to the commercial division where we would have had a normal judge. So no, everyone, I didn't forget to check a box. So I saw you nodding. What is the problem with this? What's problematic? Well, Harris, I've been practicing law for 30 years, and there usually are some forms where you have to make a check, a little X there saying you want a jury trial. But what I'm perplexed about is the Trump team could have appealed this, could have challenged this before they commit the start of this proceeding. So I'm a little confused as far as, hey, why don't you challenge it if you honestly feel you have a right to pursue Can they still do that? this jury trial? He will. He, well, the proceedings have started, Harris, so I right. think if they're going to re pre preserve this charge, they're going to follow it on appeal. But I think Trump mm -hmm. got some favorable rulings at the end of that proceeding yesterday when the judge mm -hmm. 
chastise the prosecution for a statute of limitation issue related to charges that they cannot proceed upon. Boy, you would have thought that, that those hungry prosecutors uh, would have caught that. Uh, I mentioned moments ago, having to do with Hunter Biden, that the two tiers of justice. And is this a case of the powerful, privileged going after a political opponent? Or is this fair game with Trump? What's your take on all of it? Let me think about that. Yes, Harris, this is this is a perfect example of a dual system of justice. Letitia James, before she had this case, before she was attorney general, she targeted President Trump. She went tooth and nail to find something to bring up against President Trump. President Trump is a victim of a two-tier system of justice where you look at Hunter Biden and he's got very wealthy lawyers working for him and he's unemployed. They're going after President oh. Trump because he's running for president. And that's a clear case here in this particular case where they're going after him on a proceeding that really has never been used before in this manner, downplaying the value of his property to justify trying to close him down in New York City, Harris. All right. Leo Terrell, always great to have you in focus and set us up for these legal cases today. Appreciate your time. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.